So what is the BigCommerce API? You keep hearing this word API like it's a magical thing, but you know, what is it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you what it is. And before we get started, my name's Cal, I'm a developer, I'm a store owner, and I run the e-commerce growth private community for store owners just like you and me. It's a free community, I'll have the link below. And every week I post more e-commerce videos. So if you find this one interesting, uh, subscribe and hit the bell and you can hear me talk more in the future. All right, so what is what is this API thing that we keep hearing about, right? Uh, it's like it's like it's magic, just API, it, right? But what is it? Well, API, what it is? It's a it's a it's an agreement. It's an agreement between two databases on what they will allow in or out of their database. So, an example of how to use this would be that you know a developer like me could write a program. It's generally called, it's generally referred to as writing an API, but it's not, it's not technically correct. You're writing a script that connects to an API is what you're doing. And so I can write a script that sends a query or question to BigCommerce's API. And the question could be, you know, what are the product IDs of all of the products in this store, for example, right? Now, BigCommerce their API docs uh, say that if you want to get this type of information, then you need to ask us in this way, right? So I format my question to say, Big Commerce, would you presume to give me the product IDs? <laughs> you know, code-wise, something like that. We're we're asking them in the way that they've said that they want to be asked, and then they re return the information. They say, here are all the product IDs. And then we will take all those product IDs and say, okay, for this particular one, would you tell me the name of this product? Would you tell me the price of this product? Would you tell me the whatever? And so what the API technically is, it's an agreed, it's an agreed upon set of endpoints that say, if you connect in this way, in this format, we'll give you this type of data. And so they, they, you know, they publish these API docs that say, here are the you know, so many different things that you can communicate in and out of our database and, you know, do with that what you will. And then I write my script that interacts with that API and does whatever, you know, we're supposed to do, right? Whether it's fetch information, whether it's fetch information and push new information in. The API is just a script that communicates to and from that database in the way that that database has said that it wants to be communicated with. So an example of usage of that would be like an app, right? An app is a an external script or database that connects to yours. And so it's doing that through the API. Anything outside of BigCommerce really has to communicate with BigCommerce through the API. And so one thing that becomes important is talking about um, limits. So every, you know, every system out there that has an API that has an agreed upon set of connections has to tell you, has to set limits on how many requests can come in because otherwise, you know, you could send a million requests in a second and that'll take down a server, right? So every platform out there will set limits and say, this is how many API, API calls or queries we will accept within a given time frame. And you can find Big Commerce's plat uh, rate limits here on their platform limits page, which currently is this URL up here that's in my uh, address bar, support.bigcommerce.com slash s slash article slash platform dash limits. And it's got a capital P and a capital L. Don't type all that stuff out, though. Just do a Google search for Big Commerce platform limits and you'll, and you'll find this page. And currently their platform limits are this. Number one, there's a limit of 50 API accounts. So that's 50 username and passwords that 50 different developers can use to connect to your store. So there's a limit. You can't have more than 50 API keys out there. Now you can delete old ones and create new ones as a result, but it's 50 max concurrently. Here we go. API calls, they differ it by the plan that you're on. So if you are on the trial standard or plus plans 20,000 api calls per hour right so 
20,000 divided by 60 is 333 per minute. Divide that by 60. And we got 5.5 .5 per second at the low limit, right? And this one, the 60,000, which is plus plans and or pro plans uh, and above, is going to be basically three times this. So that's, you know, 16 calls per second. Enterprise is unlimited. And they say unlimited, but technically, you know, again, if you sent a million API calls, they are going to maybe have trouble with that. I don't know. They'll probably throttle it so that maybe they re respond slower so that it doesn't take down the server. But this, this is pretty fast, right? This is a lot of API calls. Shopify, in comparison, does two requests per second and only four requests per second on the Shopify Plus. So that's their their version of enterprise, four requests per second versus big commerce's, well, 16 requests per second here on pro plans, but unlimited on enterprise. So you can see that there's a lot more API calls allowed per second, which is fantastic. Um, there's also a lot more stuff that you can do with the API on big commerce, which is also fantastic. So they're trying to make it so that everything you can do with big commerce, you can do through the API which really opens up everything. But this is important. It's important to know that, you know, you get more more calls per second this way. Um, I will say that I believe that this is a per app basis. So this is siloing your requests uh, from one app to another app. So like the other guy's app, if it's using a lot of requests per second, aren't going to affect your ability to use uh, your requests per second, but it is a slow rate overall. Uh, in comparison. So hopefully this explained a little bit about what the API is. Uh, again, it's, a, it's an agreed upon set of endpoints. You can, uh, let's see if I actually bring my bookmarks back. There is, let's see, under this right here, you can go to developer.bigcommerce.com slash stencil slash docs. And you can see uh, handlebars helper reference. So this explains like all the stuff that you can do with handlebars. Uh, and you can come in here and see the API docs and look at all of the stuff that you can do with that. Uh, there's also webhooks, which are technically something a little bit different, but those are interesting too. And uh, this is where you can learn really all about what you can do with the API. So it's, it's pretty substantial. Um, it's how everything outside of BigCommerce communicates with BigCommerce. Um, their API is very fast, but there are limits, especially at the lower levels. And yeah, hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, give me a like and make sure that you join our community here at joinecommercegrowth.com. And if you're looking for a developer to help you with your API calls or anything like that, reach out to us at Epic Design Labs. We'll see if we're a good fit. And I'm always looking for ways to help you guys out. So let me leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are struggling with. And maybe it's something I can help out. Maybe it's something that'll be in my next video. Either way, thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.